one, Dune. Shaddam IV, Emperor of the known universe, is wary of the Atreides' growth and power under the rule of Leto, Paul's father. And so, he requests that they take over spice production on Arrakis, the Dune planet, home of the Sandworms, from House Harkonnen. This is actually a ploy to destroy House Atreides, which backfires when Paul and his mother, the Lady Jessica, thought to have been killed during a surprise attack which results in the death of Leto, insert themselves among the native Fremen, and now control a Fremen army to overthrow and destroy House Harkonnen, backing the Emperor of House Korno, Shaddam IV, into a corner. This is done through Paul's affliction to the spice which grants him prescient vision. Paul's recently born sister Aaliyah was also afflicted by the spice in the womb during Lady Jessica's pregnancy and is an abomination. Aaliyah kills their grandfather Vladimir of House Harkonnen. Paul exiles Shaddam IV and becomes the new emperor alongside his bride, the Princess Irulan, daughter of the exiled emperor. Along with his concubine Chaney, one of the native Fremen he fell in love with. Book 2, Dune Messiah. Twelve years have passed. Paul is still the emperor, but his uncontrollable religious crusade has killed billions. The Lady Jessica is absent, gaining her favor among the Bene Gesserit, who most call witches. There's also a scheme forming between a Talaxu, Skytail, a Reverend Mother, Paul's displeased bride, Princess Irulan, of whom Paul refuses to impregnate, and a spacing navigator whose heavy usage of the spice hides the scheme from being seen in Paul's prescient vision. They gift Paul a Gula of Duncan Idaho, who was a dear friend and mentor to Paul who was killed in the first book. A Gula is similar to that of a clone, but this Gula has no recollection of his previous life. Irulan also doses Cheney's food with a contraceptive to prevent her from getting pregnant. Paul is permanently blinded during an explosion, but is still able to see as long as he sticks to the one path that his prescient vision shows him. Cheney, Paul's love, dies in childbirth but bears twins. This is the one thing that was different from Paul's vision, who saw only one child. Like his sister Aaliyah, these infant children, Ganema and Leto II, are abominations, afflicted with heavy doses of spice by their mother Cheney, who is trying a Fremen diet to become fertile. Paul awakens the Gula's memories, Skytel threatens the life of his infant twins and bargains with Paul, offering a Gula of his recently deceased Chaney. Paul, no longer being able to see his one vision, kills the Talaxu by seeing through the eyes of his child, Leto II. Paul abandons his golden path, meant to ensure the survival of the human race, afraid of what it requires of him. Instead, choosing the Fremen way of seeking death in the desert when blinded. Aaliyah marries the Gula of Duncan, Idaho. Irulan, forgiven to an extent, assists in the care of the twins. Book 3, Children of Doom. Aaliyah is the stand-in ruler while Paul's children, Ganema and Leto II, grow up. Aaliyah, who has taken heavy doses of the spice, has begun listening to one of her ancestors, her grandfather of House Harkonnen, whom she killed in the first book. She becomes possessed by her grandfather's memory. Arrakis, the dune planet's ecology, has been altered over the years, causing the once dry desert to have regular water. This ecological change will kill the sandworms which produce the spice. A mysterious blind religious figure known as the Preacher has appeared undermining Aaliyah's rule. The Lady Jessica also returns in fierce possession of Aaliyah and the twins. The twins have found a way to suppress any possession but separate after surviving an attempt on their lives by House Porno, who wants control of the universe once again. Leto II goes into the desert and finds his father, Paul the Preacher, after metamorphosizing with a sand trout in order to complete his part in the Golden Path, that the preacher, Leto II's father, Paul, abandoned. Leto course corrects the ecological changes done to the once dune planet using his near invincibility he gained during his metamorphosis. He then overthrows Aaliyah, allowing her to take control of her body long enough to throw herself out a window, killing both herself and her grandfather, Vladimir of House Harkonnen, yet again. Leto II is now the God Emperor of Dune, ruling alongside his bride and sister, Ganema, although no worries, the relationship is platonic. Ganema breeds with Faradun, a descendant of Shaddam IV, in order to preserve the Atreides line because Leto II no longer is capable. 
Book 4, God Emperor of Doom. 3,500 years have passed, and Leto II, God Emperor, now a grotesque being more sandworm than human, still rules following his golden path for humanity. He rules through his army of fish speakers, a powerful all-female army to both suppress and force humanity into centuries of peace. He uses his prescient vision to stamp out any acts of violence and has halted all space travel outside of his approval. He solely uses gulas of Duncan Idaho provided by the Talaxu to lead his army. These Duncan Idahos remember their original life. This newest Duncan Idaho, though, is the most rebellious so far. He questions Leto's ambitions and teams up with Siona, the newest daughter in the Atreides bloodline, to overthrow the god emperor. Siona was created through Leto's strategic breeding program, similar to the Bene Gesserit, and has resulted in Siona being hidden from Leto's prescient vision. She has stolen some of Leto's personal journals and given them to different groups to decipher. Thus, uncovering Leto's weakness is his human emotions of love. Mankind has stagnated through this lack of free will and oppression. And once the Talaxu produce Wei, the perfect female mate for Leto, this begins the start to his demise. Leto finds Wei uncontrollably desirable and asks her hand in marriage, which he hasn't done in centuries. Leto then tests the rebellious Siona to sway her into serving him as he has done with all the Atreides, including Siona. Siona's father, Maneo. It is during this test in the desert that Siona uncovers a way to kill the god emperor, water. Duncan also falls for Wei and sleeps with her. The god emperor is angered by Wei's seduction, which adds to irrational decision making. The god emperor cannot physically mate with Wei himself, not possessing the proper body parts, and had planned on breeding Wei in the Atreides bloodline, possibly with Siona's own father. Duncan and Siona are exiled to a village together living under one roof, in hopes that they will procreate, another of the god emperor's breeding schemes. And Leto II travels to the village to have his and Wei's wedding, except that Siona and Duncan use Leto's most loyal supporter, Nayla, ordered by Leto II himself to obey Siona's every word, originally to spy on her. Siona orders her to shoot the god emperor's caravan, thus killing Wei and sending Leto II to his death in the river below. Leto II reveals the location of his spice hoard and dies knowing that his golden path for humanity lives on, and that his eternal self will carry on in the sandworms eventually produced by his watery death. Having space travel available to them again after centuries of complacency under the god emperor, humanity spreads into the unknown space, never again held to just the known universe. The scattering of humanity and a breeding line beginning with Siona hidden to the prescient vision is exactly as the god emperor intended, even if his life was cut short. Book 5, Heretics of Doom. 1500 years after the death of the God Emperor, a new threat has returned from the scattering, the Honored Matres. Most likely created by the Bene Gesserit sisters who went into the scattering, these Honored Matres are faster, deadlier, and use sexual mastery to dominate men to do their bidding. It appears that they have returned because they are running away from something, which worries the Bene Gesserit who are greatly outnumbered by these space whores. A new Duncan Idaho Gula is being raised by the Bene Gesserit. Lucilla is eventually tasked with overseeing Idaho's upbringing. Lucilla is an imprinter, which is the Bene Gesserit method of control through intense sexual experience. Lucilla is a descendant of Siona from Book 4. She is intended to imprint on Duncan to ensure his obedience to the sisterhood. Miles Tegg in Atreides is pulled out of his retirement back into the Sisterhood to help train Idaho and reinstate his pre-Gula memories. Miles Tegg discovers one of the sisters, Darwi Odraid, is actually his daughter from his service to the Sisterhood and so is also Atreides. Odraid is sent to Rakis, renamed from Arrakis, the Dune Planet, and while there takes Shiana under her wing to train her as a sister. Shiana, another descendant of Siona, lived on Rackus her whole life, similar to a Fremen and has the ability to control sandworms through her dancing. 
four sandworms once again roam Rackus, containing the collective consciousness of the deceased god emperor. Meanwhile, an attempt is made on Duncan's life and he is taken into hiding by Teg, accompanied by Lucilla. His memories eventually get restored by Teg before Lucilla can imprint on him. And through another attack, they are separated. Duncan Idaho is captured by Mirbella, an honored Matre who attempts to mark him through sex. Lucilla, posing as an honored Matre, accompanies Mirbella. Duncan, with hidden talents given to him by the Bene Talaxu who created him, outmaneuvers Mirbella during intercourse, turning the tables against her, essentially marking her. Teg also manages to escape due to his newly awakened powers of increased speed and strength. Single-handedly, he wipes out an entire Honored Matre outpost with ease. Everyone regroups on Rackus, but now, even more outraged, the Honored Matre eradicates all life on Rackus using powerful weaponry. Taraza, the current Mother Superior of the Bene Gesserit, is killed, leaving Odrade in command. Teg and his men make one last stand and are also killed. Everyone else manages to escape from Rackus on a no-ship, a stealth ship completely undetectable, but not before capturing a sandworm with the intent to change Chapter House, the Bene Gesserit base planet, to a dune planet, keeping the natural spice flow intact. Book 6, Chapter House of Dune. On Chapter House, Mother Superior Odrade is leading the Bene Gesserit through their darkest time. The Honored Matre are seeking Bene Gesserit extinction. Odrade bargains with their prisoner Skytail, the last remaining Bene Talaxu, the same Skytail reborn from Dune Messiah who tried to kill Paul's infant twins. Odrade demands that he teach them how to make gulas, and has thus produced a gula of her father, Miles Teg, whom she is now a mother figure to. Lucilla is captured and killed by the Honored Matre leader, and Mirbella and Duncan are captives of the Bene Gesserit held aboard the No Ship where they procreate for them and have fallen deeply in love. Shiana is overseeing the worms on Chapter House and is also conspiring with Duncan Idaho in secret. Odrade believes that the Bene Gesserit have been wrong in denying themselves love and other emotions. Shiana imprints on the young boy Teg, thus awakening his pre-Gula memories. Mirbella, having started training among the Bene Gesserit, takes the Spice Agony and becomes a full Reverend Mother. Odraid shares her ancestral memories with Shiana and Mirbella, who are possible candidates to succeed her as Mother Superior. Odraid then goes before the Honored Matre leader while Teg launches a final assault against the Honored Matre. It appears that they have won before a mysterious weapon turns the tides against them. Odrade and Teg are subdued while Mirbella, playing a double agent, poses as her old honored Matre self while remaining loyal to her new Bene Gesserit alliance. She manages to kill the current great honored Matre, but not before Odrade's death. And in the process, she becomes both Mother Superior of the Bene Gesserit and also leader to the honored Matre. She intends to convert the Honored Matre into Bene Gesserit, but they will be forever changed, having characteristics of both groups merged into one. Duncan, skeptical of his place in the changes in his beloved Mirbella, escapes aboard the No Ship with the help of Shiana, accompanied by Skytail and a group of Jews who served a lesser plot thread in the book. Skytail also contains a vial of various genetic material, including notable members in the Atreides line. The final scene of the saga, we see Duncan Idaho outmaneuvering two mysterious, powerful entities named Marty and Daniel. Frank Herbert died before he could continue the story further. Many consider these six books the definitive Dune saga, although many more Dune books have been written to finish out the story and add context. I plan to continue to cover Dune for the foreseeable future, so consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time.